Leslie. Hey, Kelly, thanks so much. Now, Apollo has been one of the most prolific deal makers of 2021. Six deals inked just in the first four months of the year, the latest being Verizon Media, which owns Yahoo and AOL. Now, the co-head of Apollo's PE Group will join us in a moment, but I wanted to quickly share a few details from the quarter and the firm's latest multi-billion dollar deal. Apollo's distributable earnings jumped 78 percent during the quarter, thanks in part to some recent sales from the private equity portfolio. The PE Group saw 22 percent appreciation during the first quarter as it works through its ninth fund, which it's currently putting capital to work in deals like Kraft's retailer Michaels and the operations of the Venetian in Las Vegas. And the latest, yesterday's announcement that Apollo would be acquiring Yahoo and AOL, among some other media and technology assets, from Verizon for $5 billion. Now, many people have noted this, of course, is a sharp decline from the $9 billion Verizon paid for those two brands just a few years ago. Uh, there have been numerous case studies and postmortems written about the value destruction at both Yahoo and AOL since the internet bubble days. So now the question becomes... What's Apollo's vision for this acquisition that others fail to see? So let's ask the man in charge of it. Joining me now is David Samber of Apollo, co-head of the private equity group there. David, thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, Leslie. Thanks a lot for having me on. Uh, so, you know, it looks like from conversations you've had about this deal that you are looking to move past such a strong reliance on advertising and focusing on other areas, particularly as it relates to the Yahoo Sports franchise and the Yahoo Finance franchise. Can you help explain that to us? Yeah, sure. So, look, this is an iconic, a truly iconic set of assets when you think about the Yahoo branded properties and even the AOL branded properties. It's a business with tremendous scale, 900 million monthly active users one of the biggest uh, internet properties in the world still today. Uh, but you're right, <clears throat> they currently advertise mainly through banner ads, which had very low monetization. Um, so the opportunity, you know, as we see it, is to take some of these great properties like Yahoo Finance, Yahoo Sports, News, Mail, and even AOL, and continue to innovate, continue to invest, uh, to grow revenue streams beyond just typical banner ads. And the one other thing I'll say too is, They've already started to do this a little bit. The business really does have some strong momentum uh, under the leadership of Guru, the CEO, and also Verizon with their stewardship. Uh, they posted two quarters in a row of double digit uh, top line growth. So the fundamentals are all there. Um, but you're right. Uh, we do see a pivot opportunity uh, that does have some execution risk, but we're pretty excited about it. OK, so let's talk about that execution risk, because I read that part of the plan has to do with, you know, maybe finding some way to monetize Yahoo Sports from a sports gambling standpoint. Uh, and then on the finance side, perhaps making some sort of uh, financial product, even going as far as making a competitor to Robinhood, uh, allowing for crypto trading or crypt crypto content. Um, can you explain a little bit more about your thinking there? And then as you talk about execution risk, what are the, some, of, some of the big hurdles uh, that you expect to face in kind of transforming those business models? Yeah. So I think when you think about all these big properties with their big, loyal, sticky user bases, they have a lot of loyalty. They have a lot of uh, users. And the opportunity is really entrepreneurialism. You know, for, for us, um, as an owner only focused on Yahoo, you know, we could afford to take the time and spend the money to invest in unlocking the value in some of these real iconic properties like Yahoo Finance, like you said, and whether it's potentially getting into financial technology products, uh, brokerage, potentially even crypto trading, um, subscription products, uh, you mentioned sports betting, you know, we really do have the ability to make those investments um, at our scale. I think for Verizon, not to put myself in their shoes, you know, they're a $240 billion public company, um, you know, to make those investments or go into some of these areas that have a lot of regulatory complexity, um, you can understand why they, they might not have wanted to go down that route. But I think for us, uh, given our setup and, and given our orientation, we will be able to make some of those decisions. And I do think you'll see a lot of innovation, like you mentioned. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.